Welcome to the Emetophobia Free podcast. We have the most special guest that's ever been on the Emetophobia Free podcast with us today, and that's little Summer. Hello, Summer. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Summer's 10, and she's just finished the program with her mum, Susan, and they're here today to tell us all about their experience. So we started it, I counted back, 15 weeks ago was session one, because we've worked together over the past few weeks, haven't we? And 15 weeks ago was the first, very first time we met Summer, which it seems like a lot yeah. longer ago than that, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you can cast your minds back 15 weeks and think back to what life was like then, can you talk us through what it was like when you had a metaphobia and you were struggling? It was a really hard time. Yeah. I didn't really want to go anywhere. I didn't want to do anything. I wanted to stay home and do go nowhere and do nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah life was pretty, um, it was hard going. Um, I think not just for Summer, but as a whole family. Yeah. Um, some, summer was some, suffering with, well, we didn't realise it was a metaphobia at the time, but we always knew she had a bit of a, you know, she didn't like sick. Um, not, you know, most people don't, but... So way back at the start, she was probably around about five, because um, she'd been suffering for around about five years with it. Um, but it started off kind of just, she wouldn't like sick, she wasn't keen to be in the car, um, things like that. But at the same time, um, lockdown happened. Mm. So, mm. you know, things were great for Summer then, because one of Summer's things was, with the metaphobia, was that she was only happy and felt safe if she was at home yeah. because if she was going to be sick, she had to be home. Yep. And if she was going to be sick, I had to be the one with her. Yes. Um, so actually lockdown was an ideal scenario for her because she was at home all the time and I was there and she wasn't to go anywhere, do anything, see anyone. So it was kind of ideal for you then, wasn't it? Um, mm. I think the real struggles happened when it was time to come back to school. Mm. Um. And again, we didn't realise we were dealing with a metaphobia at that time. We thought she just had a bit of separation anxiety from me. Um, she wasn't keen to get back to school. We just thought it was anxiety in general. Mm. We didn't make the connection with yes. her having the, 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 the dislike that we thought at the time with sick. Um, so from there on in, it, it, it was struggle after struggle. Um, trying to get her to go to school was really challenging. Mm. Um, it was a, a daily battle. A daily battle getting her to go to school. Um, our teachers were great. They did all they could. They put some things in place for her, um, and she'd have good days and bad days. But it progressively got worse year after year. Yeah. Um, we tried everything, didn't we? We had online therapists because we weren't quite back to doing face to face at that point. Yeah. Um, we had school nurses involved, um, and then we eventually went down the route of private therapy. Yes. Because she just wasn't getting any better. Her anxiety wasn't getting any better. Um, the the private ther therapy was really good in the yeah. sense that it, it tackled sort of her general anxiety with things, but it didn't, it never seemed to be long term. Mm. Nothing ever stuck, nothing lasted. Yes. Um, so we just carried on. Things, like I say, things were going from bad to worse. She was lashing out yeah. um, at myself and her two sisters. Yeah. Um, you know, our body was going into sort of fight or flight mode. Mm. She wasn't coping. Mm. And we just couldn't understand why. We couldn't understand why she was struggling so much to go to school. Yeah. Um, she stopped all after school activities. So our swimming classes got stopped. She used to go karate. That that stopped. Yeah. Um, she just generally didn't want to leave the house. Mm. Didn't want to go in the car to places. Um, and it kind of was a bit of a... I don't know at what stage it got to, but it dawned on me that there was actually a bit of a link here between her not liking sick, yeah. which is, is what we thought it was, to actually this is really impacting her life yeah. um, in a huge, huge way. So, again, I didn't know where to turn. I hadn't really heard of emetophobia before. Yes. So we went back to the private therapist and she tried exposure therapy with her. Yeah. And... It, it helped ever so slightly with certain things, the smallest of things. But again, it was short lived. Nothing, you know, nothing ever lasted. Yes. Um, and we were at a bit of a loss because we didn't know where to turn. We didn't know how to help her through this. Mm -hmm. We realised it was the sickness related. 
um, that was causing all the anxiety, but we just didn't know where to turn. Yeah. Um, she was at that point as well. She was also harming herself. Mm-hmm. You know, the, 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 it was almost like a coping mechanism when she couldn't cope. Yes. She was reverting to hurting herself because she was so out of control. Yes. Her body was in fight or flight. Yep. We were obviously trying to make her do things that she really just couldn't do. Mm-hmm. For example, going to school yeah. or just going out in the car to go somewhere or things like that. Yes. Um, and I just happened to do a Google search and I went onto Facebook one day to, and just typed in emetophobia just to see if I can find something that can point me in yeah. some sort of direction that we could help her with with this. And that's when we found the Thrive Programme. Fabulous. So, okay, and the rest is history. So from the moment you found the Thrive Programme then, before you reached out, because you did reach out on Facebook, if I recall, were there yeah. any reservations? Were there any things that you go, going, oh, I'm not so sure, maybe not? Just just in case there are other people out there thinking, well, maybe I will, but I'm not sure because of. Um, I generally just think we were, we were at a last-ditch attempt. You know, yeah. we had to try and exhaust every avenue with them because, like I said, we tried so many things before yeah. and just nothing was working. You know, yeah. she wasn't she just wasn't the happy little girl that she should have been for her age you know she wasn't enjoying life at all Mm -hmm. she literally woke up in the morning and from the minute she woke up to the minute she went to bed she just looked like she was carrying the weight of the world on her shoulders she just was not happy yeah um angry Mm -hmm. frustrated Mm -hmm. all of these things um so it was it was a last ditch attempt and in all honesty I thought this won't work it won't work because nothing works. Yes. And I generally thought we have to just adjust life to to being like this with her now because yes. or for her to feel like this because nothing was working. Yeah. So I thought this is going to be life for Summer and us as a family because it really it did impact the whole family, didn't it, darling? It yeah. was um you know, it stopped us from being able to do things as a family because mm-hmm. Summer wouldn't want to go and if she did it mm-hmm. used to be a battle of wills. Yeah before we even did anything. So it's then set your day up yes. to be not the fun way we wanted it to go. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I generally had a thought of this won't work, but we need to try. To try it. We yeah. need to know we've exhausted every possibility to help her. Absolutely. Okay. What was your thoughts, Summer, when you thought, okay, well, I'm going to go and try something else now, this Thrive Programme, and, and you learnt a little bit about it? What did you think right at the beginning? Do you remember? A lot of what ifs, what if this happens, what if I'm sick, what if I can't control myself, what if, like, something terrible happens to me yeah. there, and I just can't control it, I can make it stop. Okay. I think she panicked a bit that it was going to be like the exposure the therapy exposure. was. Yeah. She, We tried the exposure therapy, like I said, yeah. and bits of it she was okay with, and bits of it she really just was not okay with. Yes. Um, and I think she had in her mind that it was going to be something very similar and that she was going to be forced, not forced, but she was going to be mm-hmm. asked to do things that she just knew she was not going to be able yes. to do or cope with. Yes, absolutely. And just for clarity, Summer, did that ever happen the whole time we were working together? <laughs> no, okay. We were never asked to do anything that we didn't want to do. It was always when you were ready, wasn't it, and something that you chose to do. Yeah. yeah. And I remember I actually just glanced back, Susan, at the, at the messages that you sent initially. And you said, my, you know, one of my reservations is, is my daughter's very strong willed. <laughs> and I don't know if she'll if she'll be able to, to do it or, or if we'll be able to make her do things that she doesn't want to do. And that, that just reconfirms the fact that it's we're never going to ask anybody going through the program, but right. particular, particularly someone so little to do something that they find scary. That's not going to happen. So. From that point then, when we started session one and you got your manuals, because the way the children's program works is Summer got her manual and Mum, you got your manual and you both set tasks and you read it alongside each other and worked through it together. How was that journey? How was the journey through the program from the, from the time you started? Can you remember it? I know it's a, quite a while ago now, but what did it feel like for you both? Well, it was it was good. And it was hard work, but it was good. And I know I feel much confident now. Yes. Much um, better. Like, um, I wasn't the girl I used to be 
yeah. 15 weeks ago or how long it was ago. Really. I've changed a lot in how I feel. Yeah. I wake up in the morning and I don't say it's going to be a terrible day. I say it's going to be a good day. It's all about the positive thoughts that I have. And, yeah, the books help me a lot with that. Brilliant. Yeah, definitely. Just exactly what Summer said there. I think we, you know, from, this, from the words go, we were determined yeah. um, that this was, you know, we were, we were going to put our absolute best into this mm-hmm. and hope for, to get the best out of it. Yeah. Um, not long before I got in touch with you, Summer had a bit of a, a breakdown in the car one day and she just said, I'm so tired and fed up yeah. of feeling like this every day, Mum. Yeah. You know, am I always going to be like this? I said, well, you know, darling, that's what we're doing. We're trying to find something that, that's going to get you past this. Once we realised that this was a metaphobia yeah. and we knew what we were dealing with, yeah. well, we had an idea of what we were dealing with. Um the menu sort of which way which way to go with it. So the program, in one word, amazing is the only way I can describe it. We I started noticing, and I think you did too, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Positive changes in her within the first two weeks, yes. and I would never have thought that possible. Yeah. Just never have believed it. Yeah. Um, but the first two weeks of doing the, the program, I thought, oh wow, this is actually this is making changes for the better for her. This is actually starting to, to do something for her. Yeah. Um, and then it just continued going on from strength to strength for the full eight weeks that we did the book for. And then, of course, the six weeks worth of the journaling afterwards. Yeah. Um, just, even yet, I still think, you know, how did that actually, how did that work for her? You know, how has this changed her life so much? Yeah, yeah. So it's important that it's, you know, it's, an education program so summer was understanding finally why she was thinking the way she was doing and feeling the way she was doing and once summer understood that then she was able to go ah oh, i get it now i know what i'm doing i can do something differently and that's that's the part that's the key isn't it because it's not a quick fix it's not a sticking plaster it's not something that's going to stop working because it's skills so summer actively was doing something differently and seeing the changes so she's going to continue doing those things because she knows what she's doing so why would she not yeah absolutely there was definitely a light bulb moment uh, for her when we started doing the 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 book um and that she realized actually you know she was the one in charge of how she was feeling and actually she was the one that was creating the unhelpful beliefs for herself yeah. around it all yeah. and I think once that really sunk in and she realized oh oh this is this is me that's doing this then so I'm in charge of how I feel and how yeah. and then realizing that she had the power to be able to change the unhelpful beliefs that she had around it yes was was definitely a light bulb moment for her and you actually seen the you know the realization hit her when it was like oh well actually wait a minute I could I'm the one that can change this for me and I can change how to, I could choose not to feel like this anymore right okay and just on that so you said a beautiful word there the the power and that just reminded me of one of my most all-time favorite sessions I've ever had with any client ever summer was around week five <laughs> when you said if I don't know if you remember what you said to me about power do you remember what it was I'm a power bubble. <laughs> you said, I feel like I'm a huge power bubble. And you did this with your arms. Like I'm a huge power bubble, which was just phenomenal. It was absolutely lovely. And you'll, you'll forever be my little power bubble. <laughs> you absolutely <laughs> will. Because that was just such a lovely thing to hear in just five weeks going from, I can't cope, I can't go to school. You know, I'm hurting myself because I'm not coping too. I just feel like a huge power bubble. And I think even at that point, you would got yourself back in school, hadn't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she just went from strength to strength, yeah. and the teachers even said as well that they can't believe the change in her. She's like a different girl, yes. um, and not just the teachers. That I've spoke to a few people um, over the last few while as well. Have just said she's like a brand new girl. She's just like a completely new girl, yeah. um, and she really is. There's there's no other way of describing it. She's um, she's back doing swimming lessons. She is with the the local choir group she take she's taken on um private singing lessons with a lady um what else did you do oh she's she really wants to start football fabulous so we said to our way back let's just get through the program let's see how things look yeah once you know we've done it all and you're 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 getting on good and so yeah we're considering that aren't we she's look at me as if say you're going away to Agree. I know, yeah. Um, so, <laughs> and she's loving, she's just, you know, there's no hesitations before. It used to be, you would have to sit and 
do a complete pep talk with her. Yeah. You know, you're going to be fine. Let's just get in. Once you're in, you know you'll be good. Yes. And and she she just couldn't do it before. She just could not get herself to do the fun things that she really wanted to do. Yeah. Um, and I suppose it was always having this nervous, sicky feeling in the pit of her stomach, mm-hmm. which then in turn made her believe, oh, I'm going to be sick and I can't be anywhere. I have to be at home. Yes. Um, because the thought of being sick anywhere out with the house mm-hmm. was a no-no for her. Yes. It ju- she just could not cope yes. with that at all. Yep. Um, but now it's like, you know, she's like, come on, mum, we need to go. We need to get going. I'm going to be late, you know, for our, our le- <laughs> swimming lessons or getting to the clubs that she wants to go to. Amazing. I mean, even at one point, um, my husband works away and, you know, he'd come home arrange to do fun things with the girl she's got two older sisters and come on summer let's go up even just five minutes up the road to the local play park and she just would not leave the house she wouldn't do it she she just couldn't do it yeah um now you can't get her in the house (laughs) (laughs) can we go to the play park mum what time do we need to be home and and all this that's Um, amazing isn't it it's yeah even things you would see her like even with sweets or eating um she would be eating her tea for example and you would you would you'd actually see the thought come over her mind like right I'm I'm going to stop now because if I get too full I'm going to be sick. Yep. And I suppose it's you know as a mum when they're younger and they're maybe eating some sweets and they're maybe eating too much. I've said probably dozens of times right don't eat any more because you're going to make yourself sick. Yep. yep. I didn't know then I was probably adding fuel to the fire. Yes. Yes. But you know so you you would see her stop. Yeah enjoying sweets that she was maybe having and say I'll just have I'll have some another time I'll have some another day mum and she'd put them away now geez I think my food bill's doubled because (laughs) she's always in the snack cupboard she's always mum can I get something to eat comes in from school mum can I get a snack before tea and and then goes on to eat her tea and it's just it's just wonderful to see Mm. now she's just thriving lovely and and as she should be absolutely as a 10 year old little girl enjoying life absolutely really is yeah amazing job now i said at the beginning that well mum went through the program with you and we did sessions together but i'm not convinced it was me or even mum that has got you to where you are now summer who was it you yes it was and you said it was difficult you know it was hard work wasn't it I think those are the words you said it was hard work but was that hard work worth it yes absolutely yes brilliant so while we're on the the notion of hard work which bit would did you find the hardest work which is the trickiest bit do you remember a tricky bit or, or a part that you found a bit difficult going through the program I mean, I would think possibly when it came to setting herself challenges, yeah. yep. um, possibly she found them maybe a bit tricky, the thought of beforehand. Yes. But she did them because she knew if she wanted to get to the end of it and be thriving and yes, be over. a metaphobia free, she knew she had to put the work in Absolutely. and put the effort in. Yes. And so she, she was a complete trooper. She, you know, you would see the apprehension, you would see the bit of... You know, this is something I've, you know, that I used to avoid before, yeah. or this was a safety measure I would always have in place that I need. And but she put the challenges in place, and she would set her challenges as well, and she would just smash them. She would get through it and be like, "Oh, actually, that wasn't quite as hard as I thought it was going to be." So possibly just maybe doing the challenges when, a bit tricky. When, have you thought of something of you? When, which I'm definitely better now with. But sometimes I go a bit off with it and stuff when my dog calls. Oh, yes, I remember mm-hmm. that. It gives me quite a fright. Yep. I used, not like a week ago maybe, I was still getting a big fright when she was coughed. But now I've told myself, like, helpful thoughts about it and she can cough and I'll be like, are you okay? And she was just, and then, yeah, and I'd be fine. I might go like that a bit because I get a fright. Yep. But... Because it's out of the blue sometimes. Yeah. You could be sitting in peace and then all you hear is... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not an, 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 uh, an abnormal reaction to a dog coughing to go, oh, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I remember doing some work around that. We had a big chat about that, didn't we? And, and looked at your thinking around that and mm-hmm. your beliefs around that. And you worked hard at that. And that's the reason. The reason you feel yeah. you can handle that now is because you worked hard at it. So it does take effort and it does take that commitment as you both have have shown in abundance 
but it ultimately is predictable. If you put that work in, you'll get there. You will you will be a metaphobia yeah. free. And mm-hmm. Summer, are you a metaphobia free? Yes. Yeah. Hundred <laughs> percent. I think at the very beginning of the program, that's where I thought. I thought it, it can't work. I mean, you, you can't just it can't just work. You know, just by putting some work in and, and changing thoughts and changing beliefs. But it, I mean, it really proved me wrong, completely wrong. Yeah. Um, eating my words, basically, because yeah, just amazing how different a, a girl she is now. I mean, she was. She was hurting herself before. Mm. She was, you know, just scratching. Yeah, she would, and it was, it was all. She was using. She had to have sick bands on her wrists every time we had to go in the car. If she didn't have to go in the car, she would not be in the car. Yes. But if we had to, and she had no choice, I had to be double wrist bands for the sick bands. She would have fidget toys, yes. um, you know, complete distraction, everything under the sun. You name it: squip, squishy, stress balls, mm. everything. I think. I, I think they, I don't know where the sick bands are now. They possibly got put in the bin. one in the washing machine. Was in the, the washing machine. machine. <laughs> um, so, um, so not a sick band in sight for weeks and weeks and weeks. There's no fidget toys anymore. She doesn't grab something on the way out the door when she's jumping in the car. It's just jumping in the car and getting to where we need to be. And Yeah. Amazing. It's just amazing. amazing. Just amazing. Okay. So that doesn't just happen and in terms of from a mum's perspective because when we first spoke I said that the best results are always got when the parent dives in jumps in both feet you know does the program alongside their child applies it to their own life has that really open and honest conversation with them sets the time aside every day how was it for you as a parent taking your child through the program um I mean, it, we done we done what we had to do at the end of the day. You know, yeah. when she needed she needed to be able to enjoy life again. She needed to get past this daily fight and daily battle that she was in. Um, yeah. So, as a parent, we just did what we had to do with it and and got through it. Um, it actually it helped. I would say it helped me quite a bit as well, to be honest, because I was probably saying the wrong things. Mm-hmm. Um, prior to doing the the program, you know, not things like, oh, you'll be fine, yeah, or or you know, come on, you'll get past it, you'll be fine, you know, if you, you'll not be sick. Yes. Which yes. I, I realise now, I couldn't I couldn't give her that guarantee, and I shouldn't have been giving her that guarantee. Yeah. Um, so it helped me n- know how to probably talk to her about yeah. it and to help her help her own thoughts. Yes. Definitely. Did that make Absolutely. sense? Absolutely. Yes. Um, yes. So it definitely taught me a lot in respects as well, and I'd probably say it helped me with with a bit of get up and go and stuff as well. Yeah. To be honest, you know that whole because I think when you've lived in it for such a long time, a daily battle yes. that we did for such a long yes. time, it definitely does affect my mm-hmm. mood. It did affect my mm-hmm. mood and how I was mm-hmm. getting up in the morning because you would should go to bed at night. And you think, right, tomorrow's another day and you wake up in the morning and you were preparing yourself for yet again another yeah. battle because just getting her out the door to go to school was a trauma. Yes. Um, it took a long time. There were some days we would go to school and I wouldn't get to my work that morning because it would take about an hour and a half yep. to physically get her to go into school and then it would take about another half hour sitting with her, getting mm-hmm. her settled mm-hmm. before I could then leave and you know, my shift had started at work and things. So there was days I didn't make it into work or there was days I'd come home and I'd just cry for the, the bulk of the morning because it really was, Yes, it was horrific at times and there's no other way, you know, it sounds really dramatic, but it really was horrific. I, I think every, everybody the watching this will have some link to emetophobia and they'd agree that that word is suitable. <laughs> if Whether you're suffering yeah. with it or whether you're supporting yeah. a child who's suffering, it's it's a very difficult thing to live with. Or support someone through. Absolutely. Yeah. I remember. Sorry, I remember one time I ended up coming home with them. From yeah. School and yeah. We gave in that day, didn't we? Because it took at least I don't know. Oh, what, it was a long time. An hour or so. Oh, it was longer. Longer. Yeah. We we just gave up one of the mornings, yeah. and I just said I'm just going to take her back home yeah. because it just. It, it, it beat us all yeah. down you know the teachers had been out trying to bring it in as well and it was obviously you know they had umpteen things to be doing that day too and eventually I just gave up one day and said let's just go yes. home and um, that didn't happen that was only once or twice once possibly I think yeah we only allowed that because we didn't want 
to just say it would have been easy just to keep it at Absolutely. home. Absolutely, it would have been yep. easy just to say, right, fine, we'll just stay at home. Yep. Um, but that wasn't an option. She has to go to yeah. school. Um, so we we would just get through the daily mm. battles and the daily grind of getting her there, and then maybe three or four phone phone calls over the course of the day to say she's not calming down, she's doing this, yeah. she's doing that. Can you come back? All these sorts of things. Mm. Um, there was actually they actually put a run from school protocol in place for her as well because she left school on two occasions. Okay. Um, so it meant that if if she was to do it again and the teachers the teachers weren't allowed to you know physically keep her back, yeah. then it meant the police were having to be called mm-hmm. and they would have to to deal with it. Mm-hmm. Thankfully, it never ever came to that. Yeah. Um, but she did run from school a couple of times. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean. It, it, the programme actually then helped me to change my beliefs surrounding it and to start to realise actually, no, it isn't, life doesn't have to be like this and we're starting to see that that it isn't going to be like that yeah. anymore because of what we're going through with the programme. Yeah. It was it really was life-changing. There's just no other way of saying it. It really was life-changing. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, there was two... No, there was... One time at swimming, that mum went away because I don't know, I think she needed to get shopping. And I was like, fine, I'll get in. Um, I never went in. Mum came back and found me crying in the campus, not even going into swimming pool. Yeah. Not even where my teacher could see me because I was in the campus yeah. area and like the swimming pool was in a different mm-hmm. area. And there was also another time that was quite a while ago, like years ago where it ended up I was so angry and shouting and stuff where the girls had to go to my auntie's right. house. Yeah. Because I was not being safe and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she was um when when she was going through that sort of you know, her body was going into fight or flight mm-hmm. mode. Um and that was it was her way of mm-hmm. coping. But um she would get really angry yeah. and she would lash yeah. out and yeah. things would get thrown around yes. the living yes. room and yeah, eventually I had to phone my sister one day and said, "Could you come?" And get... Because it was really yes. upsetting to the yeah. other two girls as yeah. well. You know, they were they were struggling mm. with it too. Like I said, it doesn't, it wasn't emetophobia wasn't just affecting summer. It was impacting yeah. all of our Absolutely. lives. Um, and the other girls were struggling a bit too with it. You know, they were really mm. upset, and so just to to take them away yeah. from it, yeah, we got Auntie Claire to come up, and she took yeah. them away and and sorted them out. While Summer managed to get her body back into regulated sort of again. normalish yeah. mode again, but yeah. yeah, I mean, but what I understand now from doing the program as well is that she had no control mm-hmm. over that. You know, she wasn't doing it to to be, you know, t- to no. cause upset. She wasn't doing it to hurt her sisters or hurt myself. It, it, she was she yeah. was struggling. She was really struggling, and her body was in this constant state mm-hmm. of. Mm. fight or flight in this constant state of mm. struggle mm. day in and day out just trying to fight in her yeah. own self to yes. be okay to be yep. to get through the day as normally as she could to try and get through the day with, with as little up as, as much sorry as little upset mm. as possible um and I didn't realize just really how bad it was for her internally until I started yeah. doing the program and, and speaking yes. with you yes. as well yeah. so it, I we as a family learned a lot on what she was actually dealing with because for a long time, we used to think, you know, is there behavioural yeah. issues there? Is there a, a diagnosis that I've not mm. picked up on? Is, you know, all these yeah. different things. We thought, could it be this? Could it be that? Is she just not behaving herself? Is this just how yeah. she's going to be? Or all these sorts of things. But actually, no, it was all mm. emetophobia related and it all stemmed from yeah. emetophobia. Yeah which is just mm. crazy. It is, but it's it's massive kudos to you and your family for one listening and and, and trying to understand what she was going for, through and and for you Summer because it's incredibly hard for a lot of people with emetophobia to tell people that they've got emetophobia and to open up. But actually, mm. you've been very articulate in in all of our sessions together and in in every time that I've interacted with you, you've been able to say, well, no, this is going on for me. This is what I'm experiencing. This is how I felt, which is brilliant. And it's powerful, isn't it? To be able to share that mm. and then we can work through it. Once you understand what that thought is, we can tackle it, can't we? It's understanding that thought and you've got that beautifully. It's a really good skill to have and you've really got that now. 
I'm really proud of you. She actually corrects me sometimes now. If I say, oh, I'm just not able to do this, I'm just not. She's like, mum, that's an unhelpful belief. How you could think about it is this. And so she teaches me daily as well with things. If I'm doubting something or if I'm not, if I'm frustrated or something, she's like, mum, that's not a helpful belief. (laughs) Well done, Summer. That's amazing. So I guess my next question, Summer, to you would be, there will be other children your age or similar ages who are struggling and who are thinking of going to the program and their families who are in the same positions as you. What would you say to them? What would what advice would you give? It's not your fault. You can't really control it right now. And just get help. Ask for help. Look up things like the emetophobia and just try your best. Yeah. What, what with regards to the program that you did though, um, with the Thrive program, it'll be it's hard at first, but it'll get easier and easier and easier, and just don't give up. Perfect, perfect. And what does the future hold for you now, Summer? What do you what are you looking forward to doing now that you couldn't do when you had a metaphobia? Spending time, like away somewhere like flying on a plane going somewhere where would usually make me feel scared like what if I'm sick on the plane Mm -hmm. but just looking forward to having a holiday somewhere amazing and because usually I wouldn't I wouldn't want to do that for the medical program brilliant Mm -hmm. brilliant fabulous and same to you Susan any 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 last words for families struggling with children with emetophobia um I would say if they are considering the emetophobia free program, don't think about it, just do it. Um, just don't hesitate, just get on in there. The sooner the better, yeah. because then you're getting on to a more positive um, outcome in life yeah. as a family. But just do it. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okie doke. So there's nothing else for me to say, okay, apart from again, well done. <laughs> well done to you both. But mainly, because mum's been there, she's been working her socks off, she's been supporting you, and I've been there and I've been working hard as well. But who's done the most work, Summer, and who's the one that's made the changes? Me. Me. <laughs> yes, you. <laughs> you, and you should be... But at the same time... Say it again. But at the same time, we wouldn't have been able to do it without you and yeah. all the love and support I got from my family and <laughs> friends and stuff like that. That's lovely. That's really, really nice. But as long as you know that we are yeah, there just, along um, for the ride. Huge, Sorry, go on. A huge thank you to you, Michelle, because honestly, it's just... Yeah, just a huge, huge thank you. We can't thank you enough. You're very, very welcome. You were an absolute pleasure to work with, the pair of you. Honestly, I've never worked <laughs> with a power bubble before and I'm really sad that I no, don't need to work with you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's been brilliant so thank you both for being so amazing and thank you so much for taking your time to do this podcast with us today it's really really appreciate that and enjoy enjoy that emetophobia free life and summer enjoy not feeling that nausea every day and that panic every day and that worry every day and feeling free and feeling like mm-hmm. i can just live my life and susan enjoy having your little girl back it's wonderful it's amazing yeah, definitely 100 percent